Hi, we're at DSCI UK 2025 and I am now meeting with Paul Lemo. He's the Vice President for Integrated Warfare Systems and Sensors at Lockheed Martin. Paul, good morning, great to see you. Great to see you, Xavier. Thanks for coming out and seeing us today. Paul, we're standing right next to this uh, nice and large uh, ASAF model, so that's a future destroyer for the JMSDF. You're playing an important role uh, in this program. Can you tell us more? Yeah, this is uh, one of the largest Aegis ships ever built. Um, it's going to contain our latest baseline of Aegis software, uh, SPY-7 radar, and uh, about 128 Mark 41 VLS cells. So a very powerful ship. It'll be capable of integrated air and missile defense. And, uh, you know, so defending against the latest ballistic missile threats, hypersonic threats, cruise missile threats, um, and the Japanese are procuring two of them. We are well into production. In fact, we just uh, hit a major milestone that we've completed all four arrays uh, for the first ship set. And um, they are now part of our integration and test facility in Moorestown, New Jersey, getting integrated with the Aegis combat system. So again, well underway. We'll be delivering that first ship set next year to the shipyard. Uh, Paul, your SPY-7 radar program is uh, well underway now. Uh, the first uh, ship uh, to hit the water uh, with uh, this uh, radar system is uh, the F-110 class uh, from the Spanish Navy. Uh, can you tell us more about this program? Yes, yeah, yeah. Last Thursday on September 11th, we launched, uh, of course, Navanti is the shipbuilder. They launched the F-111, which is the first of class for the new F-110 uh, frigate for the Spanish Navy. They're going to build five of those. And again, it will be uh, a SPY-7 radar, a little bit smaller size radar than the a -SEV. And it, the combat system will be a combination of Aegis, basically the fire control components of Aegis, integrated with uh, the Spanish Navy's SCAMBA combat management system that's produced by Navantia Sistemis. And this, uh, the SCAMBA combat management system will be the first non-Aegis combat system to fully integrate an Aegis-type radar, like a SPY-7, and carry tracks from the SPY-7. Uh, and it's really a testament to how we've evolved Aegis over the years to really open the architecture, break it down into modular components, so that when we work with international countries, they may have their own combat management system that they want to use. We can just bring the components of Aegis that control the missiles, fly the missiles, and have the intercept happen, but the rest of the combat management system workload can be done by their host combat management system. Uh, regarding uh, other European navies, what's the outlook for Space 7? So, um, we're obviously interested in, in uh, looking at SPY-7 for any of the European opportunities that emerge. Uh, you know, Denmark is looking to procure some new ships or upgrades. Um, Sweden, um, Germany, we've offered it to as well. Uh, in Germany, for the F-127 program, we will be providing Aegis that has been selected so far. Uh, and that's actually going to be integrated with something called CMS-330, which is from our Lockheed Martin Canada group. Uh, and that will be sort of the overarching combat management system. But again, we're going to bring the components of Aegis that are going to control the missiles and fly the missiles. Uh, they're also going to have a Mark 41 VLS launcher on those ships as well. So very excited about German, Germany's F-127 program moving forward. All right. Uh, Paul, I understand uh, there's a... Uh counter UAS uh, topics in your portfolio as yes. well. Yes. Uh, can you tell us more a little bit about this topic, uh, especially in the naval domain, uh, taking, taking into account uh, you know, return of experience from uh, the Red Sea uh, theater? Yeah, I mean, as, as many people have read about in the Red Sea, um, the, the US Navy and merchant marine ships were encountering uh, attacks from UAVs. And um, if you think about sort of the Aegis weapon system and many sort of integrated air and missile defense systems, they weren't originally designed for very small, low-flying, slow uh, threats like UAVs are. What we demonstrated in the Red Sea was that we were able to use uh, AI to analyze the radar data and help us make changes to the software in the combat system that controls the radar, the SPY-1 radar, on U.S. ships to better detect UAV threats. 
um, so that we didn't sort of uh, push them aside, so to speak, and look for only high-end threats. So uh, the other innovation was that we were able to get those changes to the combat system transmitted out to the ships in the, in the battle group uh, over the air. So instead of having the ship pull into port and have to load it up new software and take time to really test it out, we streamlined the process working with the U.S. Navy and got those uh, battle group ships updated very quickly, a matter of days or weeks rather than months or years. So from a UAS detection perspective, that's some innovation that we brought there. Uh, we also are working on a, a full-up counter UAS system for sort of land-based applications that um, takes advantage of our command and control system, the AI work that I talked about. It's open architecture. We can integrate anybody's sensors and anyone's effectors, and it's really a layered defense system because you can't have one single point defense against UAVs. There, there are many different capabilities out there today for UAVs, and so you want to, some of them you may want to take out with a small missile or a weapon, others you might want to take out with a laser weapon system or even a high power microwave system. So we've got def different types of effectors depending upon the situation that we can employ. Uh, lastly, Paul, uh, a couple of weeks ago, Lockheed Martin released, uh, released images showing uh, Pack 3 Patriot ground launcher fitted on the flight deck of a literal combat ship, independence uh, type. Uh, what was the end goal there? Yeah, so the U.S. Navy is embarking on a program to integrate the Pack 3 missile into their Aegis-based ships with Mark 41 launchers. So we're going to have the Pack 3 missiles be able to fly out of a Mark 41 and be controlled by the Aegis combat system. Uh, what you saw a few weeks ago was really uh, a, a test along the way to that capability to help us uh, demonstrate uh, uh, command and control capability of the, the PAC-3 missile. So this is just really one step in the process to getting that fully integrated with Aegis over the next couple of years. All right, Paul. Thank you very much. Thank you. Great to see you.